Hello all fiddlers. Um, I'm Maya. I play all the covers on my channel, The Musician Girl 1. Um, you probably already know that if you're subscribed to me, but to anyone who's just searched this tutorial and has never heard of me before, um, that's kind of what I do with my channel. I play violin covers of the latest songs out on the charts. So every single time I post a cover, I get at least one request for a tutorial of it. And uh, so I thought I'm long overdue for posting a tutorial on YouTube. So instead of focusing on one song though, because I've got so many songs on YouTube that I kind of just pick one to do a tutorial on, I thought I would focus a little bit on technique and skill that you could use to implement into any song that you're playing on the violin. And um, I think that would be a lot more valuable in the long run. So ones I often get requested for are tutorial on vibrato and a tutorial on bow technique. So I'll be covering both of those in the video. So almost any violin teacher will tell you that vibrato is really something that you don't just get in a matter of five minutes after watching one tutorial. It's something that you really have to practice and to hear a lot, listening to other violinists and copying their style or trying to copy their style of vibrato is something that'll really help you. Um, but you can't just watch one tutorial and then immediately know how to play vibrato. So don't go into this with that expectation of coming out with amazing vibrato. But I'm gonna go over a few of the basic steps to get a nice, soft vibrato. And I'm gonna be using Someone Like You by Adele for my demonstrations in this. So when you're doing vibrato, one mistake that a lot of beginners make is to shift their whole finger around on the string. So by whole finger, I mean they're actually, I'm just gonna come up to the camera here, they're actually moving their entire hand, like. And that gives you a really crazy vibrato sound and not exactly what you want in a nice slow piece. So vibrato is actually, you are keeping the ball of your finger exactly where it is on the string and you're just kind of rocking back and forth. So the center point of your finger never moves. It's just the fleshy part of your finger. It just kind of rocks back and forth a little bit. So I'm gonna demonstrate that close up again. So. how my finger doesn't actually move from the one spot it's in. Just kind of slightly rocks. Um, so now that brings us to how do you rock your finger, basically. Um, sounds funny, I don't know why. Um, when, you move, when you make the vibrato movement, you don't want it, your whole arm to be going like crazy. Like It shouldn't be a whole arm movement. It shouldn't be like, I don't even know how to do it. But you know, um, it's it's a pretty much centralized movement. So you want to be moving from your wrist and kind of your finger joints as well. Your finger joints play a lot in it. And um, that's kind of intuitive, but just if you think about that, your finger joints moving back and forth with the vibrato, I think that'll help quite a lot of people. Um, so think of that when you're playing vibrato. Um, now there's slow vibrato and fast vibrato. I find fast vibrato, uh, vibrato, can't say it anymore, to be a lot easier. Um, slow vibrato takes a lot more uh, precision, I guess you could say, and technique. You need to be very precise with it or it won't sound good, whereas fast vibrato you can kind of get away with a few more things. Um, so I'm just going to play Someone Like You by Adele, the chorus part. I'm gonna play with my fingers near the camera lens so you can kind of get an idea and just kind of have a look. Um, and remember too that when you wanna learn a new skill on the violin, that watching other violinists is really important. I can't stress how important that is, just getting that idea of, of the main motions of whatever skill you wanna learn, so.
out. So that's perhaps a bit more vibrato than I would actually use if I was playing the song, but I kind of wanted to emphasize the vibrato part, um, since that's what this part of the video is about. So, uh, there's a few other things I just want to quickly go over about vibrato before we move on to bow technique. But one thing about vibrato is that you don't want to have it constantly going at the exact same speed, because that will get really boring. Like if you play... You know, it just kind of gets, okay, yeah, there's no variation in it. It's nothing really to keep you interested. The whole point of vibrato is to get a little bit of variation in your sound. So, um, a lot of players, they will kind of start the note clean and then gradually add vibrato. And then at the end of the note, the vibrato will be going pretty fast. That's a pretty common way of doing it. Um, and it sounds quite nice. Uh, Louis Armstrong, I believe, does that a lot. Um, of course, he doesn't play violin, he plays the trumpet, but if you listen to some of his music, he'll start off a long note, and then near the end, it'll get very kind of wave waves in the, in the sound, I don't know, in the pitch. That's the word I'm looking for, in the pitch. Um, so keep that in mind. You don't want just like a solid level of vibrato. Think of it like a bouncing ball almost, um, you know, getting smaller or getting faster, I mean. Um, so I think that's all I have to say about vibrato, and now we shall move on to a little bit about the bow. So bow technique. Bow technique is something that kind of people tend to overlook sometimes. They kind of focus more on the violin than on the bow, but really it's the bow that's making your tone. Um, tone is very centered around the bow, and tone is something that can make or break a violinist. If you've got a bad tone, people don't want to listen to you. If you've got a nice tone, then, you know, you're going to be a bit more of a popular violinist. And um, I don't pretend to be an expert at the bow. I'm still learning about the bow, still learning about um, the importance of the bow, but I can give you a few basic pointers. So, um, very important thing to remember about the bow is a straight bow. You want to be going in a straight line. And a lot of people play kind of like... <laughs> it doesn't make for a very nice sound. So you want to have a nice straight bow, just going straight down in a straight line across your strings. And to achieve that, you want to move more from the elbow than from the shoulder. You kind of don't want to be moving your shoulder around too much because then the position of your bow changes. So straight bow is one thing. Um, another thing is to not wobble your bow around too much. And this is something that I'm definitely guilty of. My teacher is always having to remind me of this. Um, but um, if you try it, then you will get a better sound and you just kind of need to get used to it. And I've done so many years of playing like this that it's kind of hard to break an old habit. So I'm still working on it. But if you wobble your bow around too much, you're not going to get a very even sound. And also, if you wobble your bow over too much, your stick, um, your bow stick right here, can actually drag on the string and makes kind of like this hissing kind of scratching sound. And it's not a very nice sound. It's not something you want in the middle of a beautiful slow piece. So um, try and keep your bow either centered if you're playing very powerfully, or if you want kind of a smoother, softer kind of sound, then you want it tilted a little bit away from you. So you want this bow, the stick, tilted a little bit away from you. Not so much that it's going to be hitting the string, but it's actually harder to hit the string with it tilted that way because it's, um, it, your hand is so it's in a less natural position, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, so that's uh, two things about the bow. And then also to use big, huge, long strokes. This is something that a lot of people need to practice because beginners often kind of tend to get stuck near the tip of the bow using about this much bow. And I had a teacher who once said to me, if you have a hundred dollar bow and you only use a fifth of it, you're only using $20 of your bow, so what's the point of having a $100 bow? Um, you're just kind of a little funny thing to say, but if you, you want to be able to use your whole bow comfortably, and that's harder than it seems to be able to have a nice tone at all points along the bow. So um, 
practicing scales is a really good way to practice this aspect of bowing, so... <laughs> kind of do that and um, when you're doing the long bows also think of the bow wobble and straightness of the bow because the long bows it's really it's much harder than shorter bows to have a nice straight bow and make sure that it doesn't wobble around everywhere especially when you change directions so there's some things to think about about the bow and about tone um, another thing when you have a powerful stroke you don't want to scratch <coughs> kind of sound. Um, I've got a pretty nice violin, so mine isn't as prone to scratching as some beginner violins. Some beginner violins, um, you know, they have a bit of a scratchier sound naturally, but um, you want to try and get away from that as much as you can. So an even pressure is really important. You don't want to be changing around the pressure that you're putting on your bow, because when you change around the pressure, you change around the quality of the sound, the type of the sound, just... Um, you know, change change your bow pressure in different phrases of the song to like get that variation. But just in one stroke, you don't want to be kind of going, <laughs> especially since that can kind of change the pitch of the note when you're pressing down on the string really hard and then you lighten up and the pitch of the note kind of changes a little bit too. Also, depending on the quality of your violin, that can um, that can be worse. But um. There's a few things to think about on your, about your bow. Let's see what else. Is there anything else I can mention? Um, of course, a nice bow hold. I'm sure you all know your nice bow hold that you've been taught by your teachers. Um, I'll just show you just in case you don't. But um, you have a nice bent thumb. And then your these two fingers kind of curve around onto the frog to get a nice grip. Your pinky kind of sits there lightly. And this finger wraps around the stick to balance it out and that should give you a nice strong bow hold. So there's a little bit of basics and if you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comments below because I always read all the comments that I get on my YouTube channel and I always reply to them too so any questions feel free to ask it in the comments and I will happily answer. And um, if you have any suggestions for a tutorial that you would like to see, then also leave it and I will consider putting that up, although no promises, because I'm kind of slow when it comes to putting up tutorials. Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.